Traditionally, as I've said, don't involve yourself with registration. Begin your business, let it grow. And then when you've got some strength, your legs are strong, you can run, then go and formalize the business. And traditionally, that's what we do. <coughs> but seeing the gap today between the formal businesses and how quickly they grow, and the number of small businesses that just start somehow, and then they die, I think it's better now to actually formally register your business. There is no real downside. The cost of registering a business has come down tremendously. It helps you to apply your mind to put structure to it. Whether you are partners, whether it's a partnership, a limited company, a JV, an informal business, registering your name so that you are re it's registered somewhere. The cost is really incidental. It's a bit of headache, a bit of paperwork, but it's very good. Get a tax number. People are scared that as soon as you get a tax number, you've got to pay taxes. For five years, you don't have to pay any taxes, whether you make money or not. Okay, if you make profit, you're supposed to declare your, 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 your tax, so you make, they tax your profit. Because the law is, they only tax you when you make a profit. So if you set up a business and you make only one million shillings, you're supposed to pay 300,000 in taxes. You're too small, you want that money reinvested. So find a creative accountant, a good accountant, not a bad one, where you are not avoiding the tax, you are, you're not evading the tax, but you are minimizing it. That you build in your expenses legitimately. You are paid a salary. And then you, that comes off as a business expense. Your transport, your vehicles, some of these things, you build them into the business so that when the business does grow, because there it is recognized, and there are many advantages of being recognized, of being a formal business, of getting government support, of being invited to all these meetings, being part of these institutions and associations like the Chamber of Commerce, Investment Authority, the private sector of Uganda. These are all a plus which you're denying yourself because you want to remain informal. True, many small businesses, especially the Chikubo side of businesses, have flourished under the radar. But a time will come and you have to get on the radar. And the government is getting more sophisticated. And they want you to be an agent. When you collect the VAT of whatever product you sell, you pass it on to them. But you can offset whatever you've done. So there are some advantages of being a formal business. And I urge more smaller businesses to actually do your homework. Financial literacy will change all that. It pays to register your business. It pays to register with URA. Whenever you have an issue, you, they, are, they are easy to negotiate with. The olden days where you are scared of the government coming down on you like a bear are gone. You have got to challenge them, you've got to have your proof, and they will listen. They will work with you so that they can accommodate you. It's in their interest to collect tax from you sustainably for a long time. The tax base today is very narrow. Of 150,000 businesses, only 5,000 businesses pay serious tax. And the burden is too heavy on these 5,000. We need to spread it out. We need to widen that tax bracket.